Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about planets. And specifically we're actually going to be combining the 8 planets in our solar system and discovering what's going to happen with the object that we create. Welcome to What The Math. Now I made a video a few years ago where I combined all of the moons or the biggest moons in our solar system just to give you an idea of how large of an object we're going to create. And since then a lot of people have been asking me to do the same with planets. And so I decided to actually create a video where we discuss a little bit more about our solar system by first combining the planets, discovering what we're going to be making by combining all eight objects, and finally uh, comparing the object that we create with various exoplanets we discovered in the last few years. So let's start by starting a new simulation here, and starting with basically the visual comparison of the planets. So we're we're going to slow down the simulation here, and just one by one place each of the objects uh, next to each other. I'm also going to actually disable gravity for now, just so that the planets don't start colliding just yet. And uh, we're going to compare them side by side. So these are the four terrestrial planets, with Earth being the fourth. And now let's place the ice giants. Uranus, which you can see is very large in comparison. Neptune, relatively similar in size. And finally, the two gas giants, Saturn, without the rings, and Jupiter. So, in terms of size, you can kind of see how large Jupiter is, and Saturn as well, and how small Mercury is. But this doesn't really um, give you a really good representation of how massive these objects are, because they all have different density. As a matter of fact, Earth has the highest density of at 5.51 grams per centimeter cube, and Saturn has the lowest with 0.687, which is basically like seven times smaller than Earth. In other words, if I were to change the density of Saturn and make it more aligned with the density of Earth, you would see that Saturn would now be actually a lot closer in size to Neptune and Uranus. So its size does decrease dramatically because of the density. Uh, so this is actually something that we're not going to do just yet because we're just going to collide them with one another. So let's basically um, start one by one, beginning with the terrestrial objects first. So we're gonna collide Mercury and Venus. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to change this a little bit because I want them to collide without creating any fragments. So we're, we're going to disable um, the collision heating and fragmentation so that extra pieces of planets don't actually fly away from each other. And, okay, that's what I was afraid of. Unfortunately, uh, these planets evaporated because they got too hot. Let's try this again. Venus and Mercury. And trying this again. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now we can add Mars in here. Mars is obviously going to be a lot smaller than Venus. And now we can add the largest of the objects, Earth. Now, all three of these objects are actually less massive than Earth right now. So Earth is even more massive than the four of them together. So this is the terrestrial objects, all as one. Let's start adding ice giants. We're going to start with the smaller Uranus. And as you can see, it practically did not change at all. It has a large collision spot here, but because it was already pretty large, it was basically around 15, I believe, uh, masses of Earth, or 14.5 masses of Earth, it really didn't change that dramatically. Neptune, however, is a little bit more massive at 17 masses of Earth. So if we add these two together, they're now going to create an object that's going to be a little bit larger. And so the total mass right now is 33.5 masses of Earth. But the size, though, is not going to be that different from the original Neptune. It might actually expand just a little bit, but not by much. So let's just wait and see how, how it looks after a few in-game hours here. Um, so this is the old Neptune in comparison to the new Uranus here. Now if I add Saturn, which is more, a lot more large than both of these objects combined, this is when things will start getting more interesting. So here is Saturn 
and combining these two objects together will now create a, a very large gas giant that has a lot of um, materials from ice giants in it, which is going to give Saturn a lot more density. Its density increased by about 150%. Um, and if we wait long enough, we'll see that it's actually going to drop in size. It's, it's decreasing in size right now because its density dropped as well, which is kind of counterintuitive. You would expect Saturn to get larger in size, but instead it's shrinking. But its mass though has increased to 129 Earths. And this is right before we had Jupiter, which is the biggest object in our solar system, except for the sun, of course, at 318 masses of Earth. So it's literally more than double the mass of Saturn. So now if we add these two together, it's just going to literally swallow the Saturn, um, you'll see that this object will actually become 1.4 masses of Jupiter in mass and will actually start also decreasing in size because its uh, density has increased, mostly because of the stuff from the ice giants, but also because of the stuff we introduced from planets like Earth. So now if we wait long enough, it's going to stabilize at a certain size and mass. And this is now going to be known as all planets. Um, so here, this is kind of what we've created by combining all four objects. If we compare this to the original Jupiter, you'll see that it's actually just a little bit smaller in size, but about 140% the mass of the original Jupiter. So it's more massive, but it's smaller in size, which is once again counterintuitive. In comparison to other known objects, here's what it looks like um, next to 51 Pegasi b. This object uh, that was actually discovered a long time ago is only about 146 masses of Earth, but it's actually more poofy. It's, a, it's what's known as a poofy planet. And here's what it looks like next to one of the larger exoplanets known as 2 mass J2126. Um, this object is significantly more massive at 13.3 Jupiter masses, but also extremely large. This is a super large exoplanet that we've discovered um, I believe a couple or three years ago. I don't exactly remember the discovery date, but it was probably one of the largest exoplanets discovered to date. But interestingly, it's actually also comparable to some of the stars as well. Specifically, some of the red dwarfs. Like, for example, if I compare this to the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, you'll see that it's just a little bit smaller. Uh, furthermore, if you compare this to... The Trappist-1 star, the star with like seven uh, terrestrial, terrestrial planets there, you'll see that it's practically the same size. Now, obviously, mass-wise, they're going to be very different. This one here has about 84 masses of Jupiter and thus higher density. This one only 1.4. But size-wise, very, very, very similar. And this is something that most people don't realize until you obviously start creating the simulations and discovering it for yourself. Now, all in all, this kind of gives you an idea of how large our planets are, especially if you add them all together, but most importantly, how extremely massive and large Jupiter is. Most of this ma mass actually did come only from one single planet, and that's, of course, Jupiter. This planet alone basically um, is like, what, 60-something percent of the entire mass, and that also implies that um, in our solar system, this is the biggest influencer. Not like a YouTube influencer, but the influencer that determines orbits of other planets, other objects, asteroids, and so on. And also, if you actually now zoom out of this and return back to our solar system, um, you'll realize that Jupiter also kind of pulls on our sun enough for it to change its velocity quite dramatically. So if we were an alien species looking from the outsides, looking at our solar system, we would actually see our sun moving around in the skies and all of this influence would be based on Jupiter. So the first exoplanet uh, intelligent aliens might discover would actually not be Earth, but Jupiter. But that's a story for another video and so we're going to stop this here. Anyway, so now hopefully you know what um, you would get if you were to combine all planets in our solar system into one and how they compare to other objects in our galaxy, including other stars. Thank you for watching guys, space out. And as always, bye-bye.